Afternoon folks, today we're working on pushing flankers out from a tracking dog and getting the dog used to flanker movement during high-risk tracking training. Um, it's very, very common for tracking dogs to key up on any flanker movement because they view the uh, flankers as competition or sometimes a target. And this is often due to uh, this pack behavior that the dogs get into whenever a team is actually following behind them. You have to train the dog to accept the flanker movement as not a conflict to what it's doing during the tracking phase. Um, Kira has now been conditioned to the flankers and doesn't really key up on them quite as much as she did in the beginning and so we're starting to push the envelope on the distance that the flankers are from her uh, and also with their movement. As we go along here, I'm going to try to narrate a couple things that happen from a scent perspective, especially as we start getting closer to the subjects and the dog goes into the proximity alert. Uh, these are very, very important things and oftentimes happen uh, and the deal can't be closed at the ending because of how the dog reacted to the proximity alert. As you can see here, uh, the track is clearly visible in the distance in front of the dog and it's obvious that the dog is on point, on track, working incredibly well. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, dogs don't always track heads down and this is a perfect situation where they don't do it, but especially when the proximity alert is occurring. You can see the track slightly off to the left, but the dog's head is held high, tail high, almost prancing trying to get that head up as high as possible. This is what we call a far alert from a distance and in this case the distance is about 100 meters. The dog momentarily goes back to the actual physical track but is obviously reacting to wind-blown human odor. Uh, the wind is emanating from the wood line out ahead of the dog and as it hits the open area is blowing from our right to our left. You can see the track to the right, the dog is working wind-blown odor to the left. This is because there's no scent cone for the dog to work in. What it's doing is it's taking this bulk scent pool odor that's coming out of the wood line and it's chasing the odor to the left. And what the handler is going to do at some point when the trailing behavior and the scenting behavior begins to end, she's going to start working the dog back towards where she had the strongest point of scent and also where she last had the track. As the dog goes along, moving in this direction, you're going to see the behavior and body language indicators become not quite so strong. It's obviously an odor. It's following this wind-blown odors. It's blowing from right to left, but we're going to see these body language indicators begin to decrease the closer we get to the wood line.
So right about now, the dog is actually starting to work into the scent and with the wind. It still does not have a clear scent picture. There's absolutely no scent cone to work with because the subjects are actually in the wood line about 20 meters and back to our right. Uh, right now, the dog's are going into hunting mode, and rightfully so, the handler recognizes this, is going to start working the dog back towards where she believes the track was and where this wind scent originated from. So right now what we're doing is, is we're trying to cut the track or get back into that air scent picture. And so we're going to be working the dog on a relatively short lead. We're not trailing, we're not tracking right now, and even though we have good forward momentum and it appears that the dog is pulling, the dog really doesn't have anything. And you can see this by this inconsistent direction of travel. There's no consistent body language indicators, the dog's just moving. So this is not trailing, the handler recognizes this. So she continues to push forward until she sees something that tells her the dog has odor. And that's going to come up momentarily. So we're still, we still haven't crossed the track. We have no scent cone. And we haven't hit the scent pool where it's emanating from the woods yet. But the dog is starting to react a little bit. It's detecting the scent from a distance. And right about here you're going to see a hard head pop to the left and what we call a near alert. This is where the dog knows it's close and it's time to put on the brakes of our search. Windblown odor at the end of a track during the proximity alert can absolutely be a trail killer. And this happens all the time. A lot of times handlers and team members don't even know it's occurring. The alert happens, we think we're close, and then all of a sudden, boom, it, it's gone, it disappears. Nine times out of ten, it's because the dog chased windblown odor, the handler forgot where the proximity alert began, and the team was ever, never able to make it back. It's important that when you get these windblown odor problems, that you never forget the alert. The most important rule, the number one rule, is never leave the alert. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed this GAK9 training video. If you like what we do, if you have an interest in our training style, make sure you check out my new book. It's called Tactical Tracker Teams. It can be available at www.gak9.com.